It is. <laughs> no, we just, we love you guys. We're su super excited. And, um, you know, we wanted, what we want to do in this time is we wanted to do some Q&A with Andrew, um, as well as just ask some of the key questions that you guys have been asking about Karis Bible College. And um, so we want to um, just... Number one, congratulate Andrew and Jamie. This is 30 years. So September is the 30th anniversary of Karis Bible College. That's awesome. And many people don't realize that Karis is truly a global ministry and that we have campuses all over the world that are changing lives. And uh, ultimately, that's what it's about. It's not the number of campuses. It's, the, it's about lives being transformed. Yeah, let me just interject that if any of you were not here a week ago today, was it a week ago today? Yeah, that Friday. We had Festival of the Nations. It was phenomenal. And we had our international directors from all over the world here. And we had pageantry where they all came in and danced. And then they got up and talked about it. And it was one of the greatest services I've been to. We had, how many languages that we sang? I think we worshiped the Lord in at least 10, 10 languages. And so. we had the people that were from that country sing and it was powerful and it'll give you an idea of what's happening around the world. It was really encouraging. So if you haven't seen that, you can go to our website and you can watch that. Amen. What would you say has happened? What has been the biggest thing that you've seen that has happened in the last 30 years and the most remarkable thing you've seen Karis accomplish? Hmm. That's like a Julianne question. <laughs> what makes your baby leap? <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to summarize just one thing. You know, when we started Karis Bible College, I never thought about how it would benefit me. I just knew that that's what <laughs> God told me to do and I wanted to impact other people's lives. But one of the greatest results of uh, Karis Bible College, from my perspective, is that I bet you know what, 95% of our students are graduates of Karis Bible College. And I never even thought about that, but it has drawn people to the ministry. Back when we started, I think we had around 20, 25 uh, employees. Now we have 1,200. And Karis Bible College has been the feeder that has brought me so many people that are now holding up my arms. Man, if Carrie hadn't have come and Mike hadn't have come and just on and on you could name, uh, we couldn't be doing what we're doing. So from kind of a selfish perspective, uh, I'd say that Carrie's has enabled me to do things that I never thought possible. It's been awesome. It's really been good. As far as what's the biggest thing that Carrie's has accomplished, Man, I don't know. I don't think that we will know what's going to happen until we get to heaven. I was talking to some people just yesterday, and it was like this person got touched. It went out and touched this person and got that person touched. And, and there's a ripple effect of what's happening that I don't think we will realize what's happening until we get to heaven. We'll look back on this, and someday we'll say this was a mighty move of God, and we can see it to a degree now but I think that only eternity will show us everything that's happening. It's so, awesome. So Andrew, what, um, with, uh, can you hear me now? Yep. All right, I feel like I'm a Verizon commercial. Um, <laughs> what, do you, uh, what is your desire, when a, when a person graduates from Karis Bible College, what is it that, you, that, that is your desire that has been instilled in them for, the, for their future? You know, I believe that God called us to make disciples, not converts. And this is what totally changed my life. I started out as an evangelist because that's what I was, had patterned for me. And I was all about getting people born again. But then I'd go back and, and six months later, those same people, you, you couldn't tell that they had ever been born again. And they may not have been. They just might have prayed with me to get me off their back. <laughs> and um, I got to realizing that the Lord said in John 15, 16, that I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. My fruit wasn't remaining. And God told me that I had to start putting my energies into trying to make disciples, not converts. So that's what's behind Karis. And um, I really believe that Karis is a disciple-making machine. We see people come in one way. You guys have seen this. And they come in one way and they leave totally different. And it's just the Word of God. So 
I'm seeing people's lives transform. And what I really desire is uh, the scriptures that we based this whole school on is 2 Timothy chapter 2 to take the things that we've heard among many witnesses and commit them to faithful men and women so that they can go out and teach others also. So we aren't trying to build carriers around us that people come to us. That's the reason we have all these prayer ministers and we try and constantly send people to prayer ministers rather than build it around one person or one anointing. And we're trying to raise up people that when they go out, they can start training others also. And there will be a multiplying effect through that. And that's, that's what we need. We don't need another one-man show. We need people that are going out and making a difference. That's Amen. what Karis is all about. Amen. That's good. So um, talking about, you know, the past, we've been 30 years. What do you feel is, um, what do you feel is the vision for Karis right now? And why those... Um, being led by God or considering and praying about coming, why is this such a great time to come to Karis Bible College? Well, you're in the midst of seeing this vision. Like Mike and Carrie, boy, they could give you some testimony when Carrie came to the school. How many people did we have in the school? I was of the largest class at that time, 20 people. <laughs> woo hoo hoo <laughs> And so to see things happen, I remember when the Lord spoke to me January 31st, 2002, and I came in and spoke to the students and told them what God had told me. And I said, you hide and watch. You're going to see things change. And I've had so many of the students say that it was so awesome to not only hear somebody talk about what faith can accomplish. And if you listen to the Lord, here's what's going to happen. But they got to see it. And right now, even though we've seen a lot of good things happen, what God has shown me in the next 10 years is going to make everything that has happened up to this point, pale in comparison. And uh, so to come and to not only sit under the word, but then to be a part of it and to see this happen before your eyes, it's just a special time. God's really doing something special. You know, you have it up there. This is the Lord's doing Amen. it and it is marvelous in yeah. our eyes. And I think that exactly what you're saying, that we can see, wow, uh, if God can do this for Andrew, get ready to sneeze. If God can do this for Andrew, um, then what's not possible? You know, is it possible that we could play our video about what the campus is going to look like? Yes. Have that? So AVL, I know um, they, yep, they're because they are awesome. And you know, this, I'm not sure which, which uh, video they're showing. So I don't know <laughs> if this is our newest one. It's a moving target. It's changing constantly. But this will give you an idea of some of the things we're thinking about. So let's play that little video and we'll show you what this campus is gonna look like in the next 10 years. Oh, it's a, all right, so this is the existing campus. Now it goes to what we will have. Over on the right-hand side, this is our student activity center. It's gonna be 340,000 square feet. This building and the barn over there is 200, and 90,000 square feet. So it's much, much bigger. Then we're gonna, we're starting with six of these dorms. We've already got the foundation poured for all six. We've done a number of things on all six of them, but we're trying to get two of them finished by August. And so the one on the end is gonna be our, our first women's dorm. This is Grace dorm. The one next to it is Faith, that's for the guys. And this will take you inside and show you what these dorms are kind of going to look like. This is entering on the second level. There's a basement to this, and then there's a third level. That, that was a common area where people will have to relax and do things. And then we'll go down the hall and show you one of the uh, actual dorm rooms. And these are really nice dorms, too. I've never stayed in a dorm, but Mike has, and he said this is much nicer than what he stayed in. <laughs> and so this is what we call a quad. It'll have its own kitchen and uh, you know, lounge area, and then two bedrooms on one side, two bedrooms on the other side, and there will be two people per room. So there will be a total of eight people that share that space right there. And this, uh, four people will share two sinks like this and a shower and toilet facility. So there'll be four people sharing, two people per room. That's kind of what the rooms will look like. They'll have a desk below and bunks up above. So this is primarily for younger people. <laughs> and, 
Huh? And fit older people. And fit older people is what Mike said. <laughs> so downstairs, you see, we got some fire pits. It's going to really be nice. And, and I think each one of these will accommodate, what, 76? 74. 74 people. And so this is the bottom area. Each one of these floors has their own fireplace like this, and there will be recreation things in there. This is the actual furniture, if I'm not mistaken, that we've already uh, agreed to. And uh, this is another common area where the students will be able to lounge and do things. So there will be a total of 74 people sharing one dorm like this. This is up on the third floor. And um, again, there's dorms up here, but then this is the common area where they'll be staying. Antler chandeliers, it's not going to be like any um, dorm that we know about. We went to Liberty University and the head there, he decided that he would look on our website to see what we're doing. And when he saw this, he says, your dorms are not anything like our dorms. <laughs> he says, they're really, really nice. And so this will be leaving the dorms and then it'll swing around on the opposite side here and show you this student activity center. And we really need this because we are out of classroom space. We're out of office space. This will be a cafeteria that'll seat a thousand people. It'll have a, a classroom that'll seat 1,500 people and 700 if you use the schoolies. This is a steakhouse that'll be up on the fourth floor of this thing. And it's really going to be nice. And we'll use this not only for the... I love that we got applause for steak. That's that... that oh, all right. A lot of meditarians in the room. <laughs> and then this is just a common area. The bottom part down there is, uh, what did you call that? A learning center? center. And, it's and only by students. Yeah. And so this part right here, we'll have a cafe, and this is just a lounge area, meeting area for all the people. And um, it'll go over and look over the railing down into this learning center. And so that'll be where computers are. And so now we're down on that second level of the place, and this is the learning center. Over to the left is where we will have interaction groups and uh, more student things like that. And so this will show you one of our uh, classrooms. And there we really, we are having to use our parking garage out here for classrooms now. And so we have just run out. We actually had to change our curriculum because we didn't have enough classrooms. So we knocked out some of those things. This also has, I think, it, do you remember, isn't it like 80 offices? that we're going to be putting in here. So this is on the second level. Beneath this is a parking garage. It parks, I think, 250 people or something like that. And so this is the second level, and those will be offices. So it'll turn around and look back to the north and show you what this whole building will look like. It's going to be awesome. And so this will go back in and show you the cafeteria area. This will seat a thousand people. We got a little second floor there, so that allowed us to go up to a thousand people. You notice the ceiling is all wood. Everything's going to be done with excellence. It's not going to be cheap. I haven't got any money, so I'm not going to limit God. But what I can do, we'll just let Him do it. So that was our dining area. Then it comes back to where this cafe is. And then it'll go over and show you this new auditorium. And I think it's a 1,500 without the schoolies and with those tables, it will see, what, 750, 800, something like that. That's an LED screen. There's a lot of things behind the scenes. There's cafeteria, uh, kitchen, and all of those things. There's a green room. There's actually uh, rooms for guest speakers to stay there and apartments and there, there's all kinds of things in it. This will be connection over to this building that we're in. So this is a uh, walk that goes over to the main building. You can see the escalators there. And so people won't have to get out in the cold to go between the buildings. And if you've seen our pavilion down there, that seats 225 people. That's that little building in the front. That gives you a perspective on how big that building really is. 
And that'll so be, that'll be open to the public as well. What's that? The Student Activity Center will be open to the public as well, with the exception of some areas just for students. Uh huh. And so will this show the Athletic Center? Just have that. We'll see here in just a yes. minute. Okay, so then we got this little walkway that goes over to this Athletic Center, and this is 440,000 square feet. And so here's a climbing wall. There is a eight-lane bowling alley up there. And here's foosball, uh, pool, ping pong, all kinds of things for students. There's an equipment rental spot. This will be open to the public, and we will allow the public to come in here. I think it will be a good PR deal. There's all kinds of exercise equipment, not only where you see there, but all throughout the building. There's four racquetball courts. Here, there's two pickleball courts. There's three basketball courts. And then there's an elevated jogging track that goes all the way around an olympic size ice rink. And that can also be used for basketball. We could have tournaments and things like that. Here's more exercise equipment as you go around the elevated track. And then as it swings back around, we didn't have a flat spot on our whole property, so I just put the soccer field and baseball field on top of that thing. And so we're going to have that. And then as it comes around, over on the right-hand side, that building that you see, that's the lodge. That's the only thing that was on this property when we bought it. And uh, this is the road that will go over across this county, Road 25, and it will go over onto the north property. We have 336 acres north of that, and we haven't got many pictures of this, but we're going to put more student housing. We're going to put in a hotel and conference center, a performing arts center. There will be single-family homes. There will be duplexes, quads, and just all kinds of things. So we're projecting that we will be able to accommodate a minimum of 2,500 students in these facilities that you've seen and actually with doubling up, having night school or different things, I believe we could accommodate uh, 5,000 people. So right now we're at a, what, 1,100 and something. We got up to 1,200. We got up to 1,200, I think, this year, but then, you know, there's some attrition, not everybody sticks, so we're down to 1,100. 1,181 right now. And so anyway, we will be able to double at least and last year, we had how many students that uh, applied and then didn't show up? We had uh, 470 students last year that said they cited uh, student housing as their number one reason as to why they could not come. And that's, that's the people who actually did not show up here on campus. And so uh, it, we just have to build student housing. Plus, what are we going to be able to do? I mean, this is cost-wise. The students basically will be able to get housing, and internet and trash and laundry facilities and all of that plus tuition mm -hmm. for what they would have paid out in the market. So basically the students who will be staying here on campus will be able to save their tuition costs because it costs that much um, for student housing and their tuition to go and stay at a local establishment at a local um, uh, apartment complex. So this could make between 600 and 800 dollars per month different to the students and that's going to be a deal changer for a lot of people. Yeah and you know one of the things that and this is some of the questions that people ask you know if, if they feel like God is leading them to come to Karis um, and they're hearing you know that things are you know are we're growing and you know things like that should they wait to come and should they should they say okay well I'll do it later uh, and what would you say to that, uh, that mentality? Like, oh, well, I'm hearing if housing might be an issue or, uh, you know, I hear the classroom's real tight. Should I not come? I would say that if God has spoken to you, he knew what period of growth we were in and you ought to come when he speaks to you. Uh, we've had people that, you know, were thinking, I'm only five years away from retirement. If I just wait, then it'll be better and stuff. Well, I'm sorry, God didn't know that when he told you to come. <laughs> and, you know, God's wisdom is always better than ours. So if God has put it on your heart, there may be some times that he'll tell you that it's not right now and, and that you need to wait. But I'd say that if you've got the desire, man, you need to follow it. I wouldn't put it off. Yeah, and, and what, what, 
even just talking to many of you during the coffee time and stuff is that uh, you guys took a step of faith and so many of you have even found housing and work stuff even in the last three days. And again, so you taking that step of faith and just watching how God provides. And then we have uh, resources. That's why we had the Karis table as you guys go back home and interacting. We have a housing specialist. We have different things that we will work with you on. So don't let... Uh, growth that's happening here keep you from the growth that God is calling you to. And if we've heard from the Lord correctly and if we're building uh, based on what he's told us to do, which I believe we are, there's never going to be a time that we aren't overcrowded. And so it's not going to be easier some other time. You might as well get in on it and see them be a part of the miracle. Amen. It's all about trust as well because if you're, if you're basing your uh, future on your own retirement, where's your trust at that point? It's, it's about, I mean, I remember when I came, when I left my career, I, had, I was three years left before, my, before partial retirement, and the Lord asked me, are you going to put your, your trust in the state that I was working in, or are you going to put your trust in me? And ultimately, if the Lord is speaking to your heart right now, and you feel an unction to come to Bible college, I really encourage you, take the plunge, jump out now, because you never know what's going to happen in just a couple of years. You never know what the things that are going to be going on, and... Uh, uh, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Yeah, it's like Jesus said, you know, that, it, you know, tomorrow I'll go here and do this or that and buy and sell. And he says, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Man, if God has spoken to you, what, a, what an honor to have God Almighty speak to you and put something on your heart and then you're going to debate whether you do it or when you do it. I just don't think that way. The moment I know God has spoken something to me, I'm going to do it or I'm going to hair lip the devil trying to get it done, one of the two. I'm, but I'm going to do what God tells me to do. The question, why, is, why do you feel it is so important for believers to be discipled? Why is that important to them? Why is it important to the world? Why is it important for such a time as this? Well, it's important to them as a person because you aren't going to walk in the abundance that God has if you don't take the seed like I was teaching yesterday implanted in your heart. And I tell you, very, very, very few people are diligent enough to get into the word on their own and just study it. Plus, I, I think that we get things from other people that you can't ever get on your own. I certainly have been impacted by other people in other people's ministry. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a proverb that says that when you separate yourself that it, uh, it brings destruction to you. We are a part of a body and we are supposed to be discipling people. That's what the Lord told us to do. Go into all the world and make disciples. The church has changed it to where, no, let's go make converts. But that's the reason that we aren't having a bigger impact on our world is because we're having people pray a prayer and maybe they get born again. I I'm, I'm, don't believe that all of them who just go through the motions, get born again. But even if they do get born again, they don't become a disciple and they become a negative witness for the Lord. They're as sick as the people that don't know the Lord. They're as poor, they're as worried, they're as fearful, and it becomes a negative witness. But if we were making disciples, it would not only bless those individuals, you would start walking in an abundance that God has for you, but then you would become a positive witness and I tell you, if we had disciples, we would see this nation changed in a heartbeat. But we've got people praying on Sunday, Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then on Tuesday, they go and vote for people that are going to kill babies and that are going to mutilate children's bodies and support all of the homosexual, lesbian agenda and on and on it goes. That's, that's people who are not disciples. Whether they're born again or not, you can't tell. Sometimes you can't judge a person's heart, but I can tell you for certain they are not disciples because a disciple is a person who follows Jesus and that's not the example he gave. And, well, um, you know, one of the things that we wanted to also do is just, just a couple other questions that students have is, um, you know, just looking at the vision. Uh, one of the questions is, uh, will Karis Bible College ever have collegiate teams or sports things? You know, you talk about spirit, soul, and body. What are some, some of the visions of not just disciples, but, you know, what, what is the vision of some of these other things? I believe that we will, and I've encouraged it. We've already had one of our students that be, uh, won a national championship, a girl, in weightlifting. 
And so we've had people go represent Karis, but it hasn't been real organized because we don't have facilities. But as we get facilities, I'd love to see that. But I will say this, and I'm not meaning this to be critical of ORU or Liberty or any of those other universities, but they put such an importance on having uh, teams and being competitive that uh, Billy Ephard, who's a guy that is the CEO of our ministry, he went to ORU and he was on a baseball team, got a scholarship, and he said the majority of the baseball team didn't even know the Lord. They recruited them because they were great players. And I am not going to put the uh, competitiveness of a team above having people that really love God and serve God. So I believe that we will have uh, things like that, but that's not ever going to be the focus. This is a Bible college, mm -hmm. primarily. Even now, we're working on uh, intramural sports at your direction. We're looking at putting that together for this upcoming year as we have student housing. And then as well in the future, I mean, we have an incredible state-of-the-art um, sports complex that's going to be put together. So there's going to be lots and lots of opportunities. Uh, we're all big believers in that we're made of a spirit, soul, and body. So the body is important, but the emphasis always will be on the, on the word. Yeah, Mom. Uh, when you look at the dorms, when you look at this campus life, is it only for uh, is it only for young people or is it for all ages? It's for all ages, and uh, right now our median age is around what forty, mm -hmm. forty one. Our largest uh, decade of you know age is the twenty year olds, and so it's becoming younger and younger. But uh, like when we went to Liberty, when we went to RU, we went to all of these places, the vast majority of uh, colleges, Bible colleges, are really geared towards young people. And certainly the young people are, are our future. But man, older people are some of the prime people to be used because they've already raised their kids. They have, they have a retirement income so that they aren't, you know, just totally dependent upon uh, having an income come in. They've got a lot of life experience and uh, I don't have any way of knowing how many, but out of all of the schools that we've started, uh, certainly in the beginning, the vast majority of them were older people, maybe in their late 50s or 60s. We had one lady that graduated from the college that was 89. I remember her, she was awesome. She's gone to be with the Lord now, but... Uh, and one of the dynamics of this college is it's, it's really unique. I don't know any of the other colleges that have this. But because we have people that are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and then we have our largest decade of age is in the 20s, it's kind of like Thanksgiving dinner where you have the grandparents and the parents and the kids, and we're all one family. And I tell you, it's really, really good. I remember, uh, I, don't, I think you were in Russia during this time, but we had a girl that her dad brought her to the opening rally and she was wearing a leather mini skirt that just barely covered her bottom. And you could tell by her looks and everything that she just had an attitude. And he brought her up by the hand, put her hand in my hand and she, he said, She's your problem now. And he turned around and walked off. And I tell you what, she was a problem. She, she caused a lot of problems. But did you know that we had an older couple that was probably maybe in their late 50s or 60s at that time, and they just took her under their wing. And she uh, rented a room from them, started uh, doing it with them. And by Christmas, this girl was totally turned around and loving God. And that didn't happen just through the Bible college. It happened through this dynamic of different people being here and speaking into each other's lives. And having people live here on campus, we're going to have a resident, uh, what are we, R RAs. resident advisor in each dorm. And uh, so anyway, we are going to have more interaction like that. And especially when we get the Student Activity Center and people are eating here and doing all of their things together. It's just going to increase. 
carries his value because so much of it doesn't come only from the platform. It's what's happening among the students. And that's going to really, really increase. Yeah, I think it's, it's really about creating community and, and like giftings and sharpening and relationships and friendships. So we're super excited about that. And, you know, there really is kind of a greenhouse effect taking place here. You sit under the word four hours a day and the people that work in these cafes and stuff, they just love you and they, they treat you awesome. I go over here often to the cafe and people will buy my stuff or I'll buy things for them. You don't get that outside of here. So there, it's, you're just living in kind of a bubble here. And some people think, well, you need to get out in the real world. Well, yes, you do, but it's like a little uh, plant when you first plant it. It can't withstand a blizzard or a flood. You need to get the thing rooted and grounded, and then it can withstand whatever the elements are. But there really is something special that's happening here, and it's just going to be increasing as we build out all of these facilities. You know, the first night, Andrew, that we had um, Tadaya's gain, that performance as well, and we have... Uh, we have uh, I believe it's 28 different conferences every single year that's including our performances. How important is that the aspect of putting to practice like through performances and engaging the student body? How important is that to you as well? I think it's very important. You know, this wasn't part of my original vision, but my original vision was just to reach as far and as deep as I possibly could. And I was doing it through my gifting, which is to teach. But then God has brought people like the Murins and through the musicals, they are touching people that I'll never touch. And, you know, we're, we're producing this Gospel Truth Network, and Mike and Carrie are the lead on that. And they're putting in children's ministry. They're putting in ministry to, to young women. They're putting in ministry to people that want to go hiking. We got something about uh, hiking with uh, uh, Clay and other people. And, and we're just doing all of these different things. I support that 100%. It's not my gifting. But I think it's great. And I see a lot of other things happening that I wouldn't speak out right now because I don't know for sure that it's the Lord, but I would embrace it. And I think that eventually uh, this campus, we now have 527 acres. There is no telling what God is going to do here. But these immediate things are going to cost me a billion dollars. That'll keep me busy for the next 10 years. So that's where I'm focused on Amen. And, you know, one of the things we just want to encourage, you know, on behalf of the staff here and teachers and our adjunct faculty, how many of you enjoyed Pastor Lawson today? Wasn't he great? Um, and we have adjunct faculty that flies in from all over the United States, from all over the world, um, just coming and bringing their anointings and their experience and their wisdom and um, you know, on behalf of all of them, they, they, they prepare, they pray, they have vision for you because at the end of the day, it's changed lives as you get a hold of the things of God uh, and you go out and uh, impact your spheres of influence and the people that God has for you, then there's no telling how God can use you. You know, one of the testimonies that came during uh, when all of our directors were here, and you know, it gets back to how you see God is then the way that you move, right? If God's big in your heart, and we talked about this the other day, if God's big in your heart and mind, then you take the limits off of God. And we, um, we had students that were actually out of our Hong Kong campus. Um, they had, just like um, you guys, they'd studied the word of God. Uh, they uh, went on a mission trip as a second year student because we require all of our students to go on a mission trip to start to put to practice. We don't want you to be so, we don't want you to leave with a big chip on your shoulder of everything you know, but you're hearers and not doers. We want to be doers of the word, right? So um, these students, they go to Vietnam actually for their, um, uh, for their trip and they're preaching the word. The students are preaching the word. They're preaching the sermons they had prepared. And there was a pastor there of the deaf community there at Vietnam. And he started hearing about the goodness of God, that God wasn't against him, that God wasn't disappointed with him, but the goodness of God, the greatness of God, and what was possible. And he got so blessed. He got such a revelation of the God's goodness that he looked at his deaf son. And he had been preaching to his son that the sovereignty of God, that God was against him, that this was God's will, God's, you know, you have to figure out how to glorify God. And so he'd been teaching his son, you know, that this was God's will. And instead of, of 
continuing that after he got this revelation, this pastor, after he got the revelation, laid his hands on his own son's ear, prayed for it, and his son started to hear. Amen. That's awesome. And you think about that, it's just like the word can touch a life. And then when you start to believe what is not possible, and then through that pastor of the deaf community, what is he going to be able to declare about the goodness and greatness and power of God? That's what these buildings are about. That's what the staff is about. That's what all these programs are about, is that you would come to know God in a way that you would step out and begin to see God do impossible things you know, extraordinary God doing things through ordinary people like you and I. That is, that is what this Bible college is about. And you know, with this, the, the goal behind it, the, 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 the emphasis that Andrew has on the word of God here at Karis is really the key. Because oftentimes what we'll do is we'll see people come in every single year where they've put boundaries and borders around their own lives because of their experiences. Well, the word of God breaks down those borders. That break, it breaks down the excuses and truly empowers us to step beyond our own natural abilities. And that's the whole aspect of coming into relationship with God to realize, as Carrie had mentioned, that he is a supernatural God. And guys, he has no choice but to, to work through imperfect natural people. That's right. Praise the Lord. That makes every single one of us qualified to be in relationship with him, to see great things happen. And so and as, you're, as you're getting freed from those bonds that we all have put upon ourselves, it empowers us to go forth. And, and again, you know, the, these buildings, they're a tool so that people can stay here for three, maybe four years, and then they go out. They discover what is their calling. They, they, they find open doors because, again, Karis has built connections in at least 22 different nations. That, that's not even the tertiary nations. That's just the ones that we're in right now. And that doors will already be open as people have ministry opportunities, as people want to go open up orphanages or drug rehab centers or other Bible schools in different nations. We can help with that. We can help lay the foundation because we're all going forth to build the, build the kingdom of God. And that's what it's all about. It's about exalting the name of Jesus. It's about all of us discovering what is my gifting, what is my calling, what is my passion, and beginning to take steps to actually accomplish it. So let me ask uh, another question. And what for, when someone says, when they think of Bible school, they're thinking, well, I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't want to go into ministry, but I still feel called to come to Bible school. What would you tell them? That if they're saying, I don't, I don't want to go into ministry, is Bible school only for those that are going into full-time ministry? I would say we don't want you to go into full-time ministry. <laughs> now, we want those that are called into it, but we are trying to equip people that you can go into the marketplace and just... I guarantee you, you've got to know the Word of God. You've got to have it working in your life. It doesn't matter if you're in business, if you're just a parent, uh, whatever it is that you're doing. We need ministers out in the marketplace. We don't need everybody behind the pulpit. You know, I think of Colin and April Carr, which most of you wouldn't know them, but they came to us and uh, they just got totally transformed by the Word of God. And he was working for a real estate company up in um, Denver. And he just planned to continue to do that during his schooling. But then he got so transformed, he wanted to go into the ministry. And I didn't know these things. And without me knowing what was going on, the Lord just put on my heart and I prophesied to him. I said, you've been praying about ministry or business. And I said, it's not either or, it's both. And when I said that, it just... Uh, reveal to him that he could be a minister in business. And so now he has started his own real estate thing that specializes in, I don't even know how to describe it, but it, you, anyway, it's in all 50 states. He is multimillionaire. He's got, I don't even know, it's, do you know, it's over a thousand employees, if I'm not mistaken. And it is a Christian company. They go and they train them. They're seeing people born again. He is ministering and touching more lives than many pastors do. And so my answer about do you have to go into full-time ministry? Well, if you're going to go into full-time ministry, you definitely ought to be here. But no, it, we want people to be in the marketplace. I would love to see that. So you don't have to be a full-time minister. I think that's so powerful. Well, we just have a few, a few minutes left. Well, Andrew, what would be your last 
call to action, your last you know, charge that you would say to those who have made the commitment to, yes, they're coming to Karis, or even those that are still praying about it, still seeking God's timing, what would you just encourage everyone in this room and for those online? Well, I, I think I can answer that, but I had something else I was going to say. So Please, let me put them all can say together. What Hopefully it will all want. come together. But, you know, back in the first 20 years of my ministry, it was all about me going out and proving that the Word of God worked. And I was the one that prayed for everybody. I stayed up until 2 and 3 o'clock, typically after I ministered, praying for people. And I remember people in wheelchairs, crutches, waiting for me to pray for them. And they would eventually, at 2 o'clock in the morning, just have to leave. They couldn't do it. And I realized, even though I saw people raised from the dead and blind eyes open and uh, saw a lot of good things, I just realized that, man, this is inefficient. And then when we started the school 30 years ago, I started bringing my students with me. And anyway, now I've come full circle that I would rather see somebody else pray and see the dead raised and the blind eyes open than to have me do it. Because I, I've proven that it works and it works in my life, but I'm trying to train up other people so that they can go do the same thing. And I think, uh, Carrie, you were with me when we had the seven people up here on this stage and we had the little baby brought and put right there on that corner. And I stood here and I was praying, but were you laying hands on this little baby? Yeah, or? All, like all seven. And, all and, seven of us were. And the others were. And I was just sitting there watching them do it. And this baby was dead, 14 months old. Its arms were out like this. And as they prayed, just all of a sudden, you could see the gate baby gasp and its arms come up and raise from the dead right here on this stage. Yep. And to me, that was better than me seeing it happen through mm -hmm. my prayer directly because I've got an expiration date, every one of us do, and we've got to train other people. And so that's what Karis is all about. And if God is speaking to you, I can guarantee you there is no there is no reason why you shouldn't come unless God tells you no. If he has a different assignment for you, and there are people, he doesn't want every person on the planet to be here in Karis, but you nearly have to have a word from God not to come because it'll help you in any area of your life. I guarantee you, you'll be better off. This is not going to hurt you at all. All it would do is help you. And we have so many testimonies of people that came not expecting anything. And after two years, their whole life has changed. I'm thinking of Dottie Heyman. And uh, most of you don't know her. We've got a video about her, but she came from the hollers of West Virginia. She had never been outside of her holler. And uh, an Indian chief gave her family Kings Mountain in West Virginia, and they had lived on that property since the 16 or 1700s. She would go out with her gun a week at a time and get all of the food for her family. And I mean, she makes me look like I'm posh, which is hard to do. <laughs> Dottie was, was from the backwoods. She came here and... Uh, I could give you story after story. But anyway, she went on her missions trip to Kenya, fell in love with it, went to Kenya with $700. The person who said he would help her uh, took $600 and scammed her out of it. And all she had left was $100. And she has been there for 20 years and has never come home. She has like 13 orphans. She's got her own house. She helps, uh, I don't know, a thousand widows She's seeing miracles happen. And this woman's life was just transformed. And she's never been back home. She, all she had was $100 and has never run out and been there for 20 years. And I've been over to see her and I tell you, it's just awesome. And that same potential is for every single person here. So if you come here, you're going to realize what your potential is. God will reveal things to you, show you his purpose for your life. And I would suspect that the vast majority of people don't have a clue what God wants them to do. They're just going through life. And if you're born again, you may want your life to glorify the Lord. But in a sense, you're doing whatever life has given you to do. And you're just asking God's blessing on it. Man, there is something so much better. And that's to find out what God intended for you 
And once you find that, you don't ever have to ask God's blessing. There is a supernatural anointing on you when you are doing God's will. And very, very, very few people have ever experienced that. And Karis will help you to find it. I just want to, if you don't mind me interrupting for a second, the one thing that, um, you know, I, I, just in talking with different individuals, you said, you know, like right now is a really difficult season and I can't do it. What we want to inspire during this time is that we have so many different ways and this is why you need to go back to the table and talk to our recruiters because we have online and people have said, well, is online better or is in person better? You know, when, when you come in person, you're doing four straight hours a day for five days a week. There is this focus and discipline that sometimes we need to just be, have the discipline, don't we? Um, because Plus it's easy. you get the interaction from the other students. Yes, but... If you're also saying, well, I can't, well, then don't just push the word aside and say, well, someday I'll grow. No, we have an option, and that is the online. So you can bring that relationship of the word into where you're at with your family situations or your work situations or just the season. Don't not grow in the word because you can't move. This is not about we want everybody to move to Colorado. No, we're calling you to discipleship to get into the word of God. And that is our heart for you. So please um, talk to our recruiters about that because we want, we want that process. Now, I know we've talked to, I've talked to a lot of young uh, ladies, a lot of young men that you are freshmen, juniors uh, right now. And you're like, I'd love to come in a couple years. Well, awesome. I, I guarantee we are building an amazing campus for you. But in the meantime, we have so much that we would like to continue to invest into you. So check out, you know, we have Andrew's show. We have my show. We're getting ready to start Gospel Truth. TV. But we have all kinds of resources and study guides and the curriculum. You'll find so much of it in the bookstore. Don't let something be ignited within your heart and be like, oh, well, that's two years away and then get lazy. No, God was, God was stirring things up in your heart at this time. You know, I don't think we've mentioned this during this thing, but we have 200,000 hours of free material on our website. If you study 24 hours a day, it would take you 22 years to go through that. If you only devote eight hours a day, it would take you 66 years to go through it. And that's all free. So we've got a lot of material. But, you know, for you to just go and pick and choose on your own, you may start with something that is at this level and you're down here at this level. So that's the reason Karis Bible College starts you from the foundational things, walks you through the first year, is just making sure everybody's on the same page. The second year is more about practical application, going on a mission trip. And then the third year gets you laser focused on what God called you to do. So we've organized it in a way that I, you know, you would really be hard pressed to come up with that on your own if you just go and try and study it all on your own. Well, Andrew, would you um, please close in prayer and just pray for us, um, pray for every person making the decision, the decisions they have made, just to see that provision, that confirmation. And then we have something really exciting we're going to do afterwards. Um, but thank you, Andrew, for starting this college. Well, Father, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love you and thank you, Father, for redeeming all of us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for giving us the word of God that'll make us perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Father, we just thank you for leaving the Holy Spirit and giving us everything that we need. And I know that you've directed us to start this school. We've seen it change thousands and thousands of people's lives. And for the people who've come here checking it out, Father, we don't want anybody that you don't want to be here. But I pray for every person that you are speaking to, that we are your sheep, we hear your voice. And Father, I believe that we are not going to let our flesh, our fear, worry about things, stop us from doing what you call us to do. Father, I just pray right now that the Holy Spirit lights a fire on the inside of every person's heart who's supposed to be here that will not be extinguished by any of the other voices or any of the other things. We just thank you that you are drawing them and that, Father, they will come here and we praise you and thank you in advance that you are going to change lives. I know that this will be an awesome decision. So we just agree on that. And Father, we pray for those that don't know how to get their finances together.
how to leave family or businesses and stuff, we ask that you just give them a supernatural peace that it's all going to work out and that, Father, they would uh, go ahead and obey what you tell them to do. And we agree on that in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank Great you God. so much, Andrew.